So you have come to extract an asset from the game. And the first thing that you're going to start out with is find the asset that you want to extract. So this is the one here that I've uh, got prepared. This one I'm going to want to extract. So I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, lift it up. I'm going to tick on this one, show hierarchy, open them, open that one. Open it all the way until you find this one. So after you've ticked that, you want to delete the script. Then delete the game asset, Control Z to undo it. You can click on this and then I'm just going to drag it out of there so it permanently stays away. Delete that. You cannot edit these assets here as this is uh, simply a reference that these scripts are missing. You're not really supposed to see this. But the reason why we need to see this is because we want to see the object that we want to extract. So the name of the mesh here, Object Tony. We're going to go to Asset Studio. We're going to load up this file here in the game assets. And the one that you're going to look for is resource.assets. We're going to load that up. And let's just type in there. We're going to do ob object 020. And then that'll find that. And then see this is here. This is the asset that we want. Though we can see in here it's a bit wider. We'll have to scale it when we get into the Unity engine. Not. I'm going to export this to the my desktop folder in example. I've already got it saved in there though, so I'm not going to do that. And then I here, you're going to have an OBJ. You're not going to have this FBX. This is what I've already prepared. So this FBX, I'm going to be using Blender for this. So you're going to open up a file. And then you're going to import the object. For most cases, you won't need to do what I'm about to do. But uh, if you're just using an asset which only has a single texture, you're just going to have to import and then immediately export as FBX. Because uh, OBJs do not work properly in the game. So I'm going to go and get my example, which is here, and then you'll see it loaded in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode. In fact, first of all, you must delete light and camera. We don't, we don't want them exported. And so I'm going to go and change this to the select circle. I'm going to lower the radius of this. And then the thing that you're uh, interested in here is the materials properties. So you want, so as you can see in Unity, we've got three elements here for three different materials because they're using three materials here. So that's what we're going to want to make in Blender. I'm going to do new, new. Uh, but you see here, because we've extracted this OBJ, everything's going to be selected under this one material. So we're going to have to go and find in here what uh, materials are assigned to what. And so uh, now that we've seen that, we know that these are the wood, these are the cloth, these are the dirt. However, the way that you're supposed to go about this, at least, is, so, uh, I've already prepared, but I'll show you an example. So I'm going to go in here, uh, and the way, so you, if you want to, depending on how you want to do it, you have your vertex locked up here. So you can do faces, if you want. So you have face locked, edge locked, vertex locked. So face locked, it will paint that. Edge locked, it will paint the edges. And then vertex is the points. You want to hold down uh, control, select multiple at uh, once. You hold shift to uh, or control to deselect, and then hold shift to paint multiple at a time. And then the easiest way to get this done is paint a few. Control L. It will um, select all of the others that are attached. And if you press G, you can see the ones that we've got selected here. Right click to cancel that. And then if I just press 5 on my numpad, it can be a little bit easier in isometric mode. Just so the perspective isn't messing with us. Uh, we're going to go and face select here because it's a bit easier. And so just for the wood, we're going to go all the way down here. Control L to group all of them. Um, we do not want to remove the doubles. Or uh, do not... Um, I'll find it. I think it'll be in here under vertex select. Yeah, you do not do not do this because if you do that, you see it'll break the normals on these. The and they'll just look weird in game, and uh, I don't really want to bother fixing them. I mean, if you want to fix them, go ahead, but that's fine. Don't have to. So go through, paint all of them, and then once you've done uh, selected all of these, I'll quickly do that. So I'll just quickly paint all of these over my shift and I'll control L. I'll grab them away to what I've done. I'm just going to come out of isometric mode here. I'm just going to paint these over. Control L to group select. Okay, we've got a few there that are selected that we don't want. A few faces here that still need selecting. Control L. 
press G to hold, pull down, right click. And we've got some here that we don't want. So we're going to control left click to unpaint them. Just going to enable this so we can see through the objects. This is x-ray mode. Uh, this is uh, going to be located in the top right up here, this one here. I'm just going to unpaint these. There we go. And then we'll oh, just paint that there. Control L. Press G, pull down, right click. Just going to check if those are done. Okay, those are done. So we're going to select material one here and then assign. So now when we go to select these, these are on a different material. And we'll just rename this wood dirt and cloth uh, the cloth is going to take a while to do I've already done it on my other one so I'm not going to do it now but it's the same premise for the cloth just deselect this, click on cloth go through here, find all of the things that you want to paint onto the cloth Control L, match them up G to make sure that they're not getting anything strange and then assign when you're done uh, so I'm just going to get the one that I've already saved here and so on my cloth, I've got all of these done here. Wood is oop, wood is done, and then the dirt is also done. And so we're gonna extract or export file export FBX. I'm just gonna save it same name .fbx. I've already got it saved. Um, you don't really need to touch any of the settings. You're just gonna export. So I've brought that into my folder here, and then, so in your personal files, I've already dragged it in, so just drag that in there, it will import into here, and you have all of these settings here, put the scale factor on here uh, to 0 0.1, um, if this says 1 centimeter to 0 0.01 unity, though I've got another one here which did actually export properly into 1 meter unity, so I didn't need to touch the scale factor in that. However, the other one I did have to, and I've already scaled it down. So when you drag it in, it'll be that. So this one's going to be rotation minus 90, just to get that flat. And as we can hear, it's stretched, so we can thin it up. And then we'll just try and match it up to the game asset. I've already done that, though. I've got a prefab here. And so that one there isn't matched up pretty nicely. So now we need to go and hunt to get the textures. And this will include how to fix the normal maps as well. So we're going to go back onto this one. And then we're going to open this. See what textures that we need. So this is the albedo texture. And this is going to be wood 1. So we're going to go into here and type wood 1. So we've got our woods here. That we need. And so we need wood 1. Wood 1 MNP. And we need the wood 1 NMP OOC. So we're going to go in here, so we need this one, this one, and this one. First things first, you're going to want to go into options, export options, uh, and tick this to export as TGA. You want the nice quality files here. So we're going to export selected assets. I'm going to export it to my desktop folder first. I'm just going to extract all of them, MMP. Export options, oh no. Export selected assets. Done. And so now in our textures, we will have our occluder, we will have our albedo, but the most important one uh, f that we have open is going to be the normal map here. Uh, the normal maps in Unity, when extracting, will be broken. They're going to be in the wrong channels. And so the ones that you're going to have to change, you're going to be, you're going to go into channels here at the bottom right. You're going to go to red, control A, control C, paste in blue. Control A, or go into alpha, control A, control C, red, paste. The green channel chair is the same. We delete the alpha channel. And then here, you see we have a fixed normal map. The blue is actually missing data, however Unity will fix this data for us when we import, so we can just save. And then if we go back to our textures here, 
we can drag them into our Unity project here. I'm just going to put them in a new folder. And then good practice for importing uh, materials because you don't want to bloat your map file too much. Any materials that you import, you just want to select, put the compression to normality, crunch compression, and stick it to 80, and then apply. This will just help keep your map size uh, smaller and not bloated. Now, you know, smaller download size, quicker map loading speed. The stuff that we like. And then we're going to set this to normal map in here because this is our normal. And so for the wood, now we're going to go into create a material for the wood. In fact, let's put another folder wood. Stick them in there and then we'll create a material for it. Wood one, we'll just call it. Or wood, doesn't matter. And then if you have the Uber shader installed, uh, and then you can use those, specular, specular core. Uh, if you do not have Uber, it is a paid Unity Store asset, and you can just use standard specular setup. However, with the Uber setup, you will get the wetness and the snow uh, when it rains and snows so in game. This one, we're going to go into Uber, and we're going to set up our materials here. So we're going to go into the wood rough green. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the material properties, wood and then paste material properties. I'm going to drag in my wood, my normal, and my cluder. Uh, what we did forget though, we forgot the rain ripple and the uh, bump checks and microsurface, but it's fine for now. So we'll just drag that onto the wood here. Uh, but we, however, do not want the wood to be no, it's not that one. Which one is it? Is it the second one, I think? That one. There we go. So now we have our wood texture working here. And as you can see, practically identical is the same. And then I'll just set these up for the other ones. Okay, so we want to grab these textures quickly first as well. So these would be the ripple texture. So that's going to be called ripple normal. And we'll find this in the place on there. Although I believe I may already have it as they are the same textures, I believe. Yeah, so I already have Ripple Normal here. Um, but you're going to go through the same process of uh, extracting and then fixing by changing the channels and then importing. However, I already have Ripple Normal here, so I'm going to change my material of that. So I'm going to go on to my example textures. I'm going to go on to my material. I'm going to go down to my textures here. Ripple normal. Drag that one in. But now I'm going to find what the bump map is. Oh, that's ripple as well. So that's ripple normal too. So we're going to drag that in. And then snow texture one. Oh wait, yeah, so that one is just literally called snow texture one K. Snow texture here. If as I said, if you only have a uh, specular, just set up those. But um, the Uber shader will give you the benefits of the weather system in game, which just makes the exported materials look a bit better. So we're gonna go through the process again. The other ones. Which is going to be cloth sack, that's that material. So this one's going to use fabric sacking. Fabric sacking 2k albedo, fabric sacking 2k normal, fabric sacking 2k AO. So those are going to be the ones that we're looking for there. Albedo normal. Uh. Okay, so I've had all my materials made now after copying the ones off here. So with the right click, copy material, and then I'll paste them in here. And so all I want to do is I want to drag soil onto there. I want to drag wood onto these at the front. And I want to add the dirt one onto there. And now as you can see, we basically have everything identical. 
And if I were to go to the Uber at the top here, and if I wanted to say, put the snow all the way up, then it practically has the same effects now as uh, all the other uh, snow objects like this here. This is a custom export as well. And that's got all the same settings as the one in game. And these ones here, they share the same. So they'll get work, they'll simulate the same thing. Uh, and so that's all sorted. Uh, obviously the main reason why you'd want to extract a game asset is because you can edit it. You can actually play around with it properly, change all the settings, you know, change all of this stuff in here. Uh, obviously you'll want to add your, uh, whatever it's called, physical object properties mod. And so we'll set that to, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know what the base game one is. <laughs> it might be wood or it might be dirt. It's probably dirt. So we just set it to dirt and then that's done. There's pretty much nothing else to it. This one's got a mesh cloud on it. We can do the same. You know, just copy or play around. Like this is, you know, a fully imported asset now that you can do literally anything you want within the game engine, uh, you know, within the bounds of Unity uh, and you're not locked behind this. Uh, you probably will want to save it as a prefab though, so make all your changes, go into the personal or my example, so I'm gonna, just going to delete that prefab quick, yep, and so now I'm just going to make a new prefab, drag that in there, and now it's saved with a prefab, so every time I want to drag it in, it's a copy. This is basically all we needed to do uh, for a custom game asset. Uh, I would like to thank Uberjuice and Amblico for all of the help in figuring out how to fix the normal maps. That was the biggest issue that we had for the longest time, uh, putting custom or extracting the normal uh, assets and putting them into the engine. But now we figured it out. Uh, 